This video will cover the Geometry Common Core exam from August 2015, questions 22 through 25. Number 22 says a quadrilateral has vertices with coordinates blank, 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 and blank. Which type of quadrilateral is this? So what we should do is sketch these coordinates or plot them on a graph paper. You have graph paper at the back of your test, so if you want to turn there and plot it or rip that sheet off and plot it, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to sketch them right here, and hopefully we can get a good picture. So I have negative 3, positive 1. 1, 2, 3 to the left, positive 1 means that I have a point right here. Then I have 0, 3, over 0, up 3. 1, 2, 3, right here. Then we have over 5, up 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2. And negative 1, negative 2. Left 1, down 2. When I connect these, it's very clear to me which shape this is. A rhombus, of course, has congruent sides. It's a, like a tilty square. A rectangle has opposite sides congruent. And four right angles. A square has all congruent sides and four right angles. And then a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. If you look at this figure that we have drawn, this side has the same slope as this side if you did a little bit of calculating. And you can also see that there are no congruent sides here. None of the sides are equal, which means that we are left with a choice four. Number 23 says in the diagram below, triangle ABE is the image of triangle ACD after a dilation centered at the origin. The coordinates of the vertices are, and then they just list them there for you. Says the ratio of the lengths of BE to CD is, and then again, fill in, a, fill in the blank here. So what we're asked to do is find the ratio of BE in relationship to CD. So what I'm going to do is figure out where E is lying. E is currently at over 0, up 4. And I'm also going to find out where B is lying. B is at over 3, up 0. EB is one segment. So then I need to find out what DE or DC is. D is at over 0, up 6. And C is at over, hmm, this is tricky, 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. Up zero. So what we can do here is look at setting up um, a proportion between these side lengths. So the length of AE is 4 and the length of AD is 6 because you can just count boxes here. Then we have the length of AB is 3 and the length of AC is 4.5. That means whatever we find is a proportion between the left and the right side would also be equivalent to the proportion between EB and DC. So if we go with a proportion like small triangle over big triangle, remember being consistent with proportions is very important. We have 4 over 6, left side over left side, small triangle over big triangle, equals 3 over 4.5 which should also be equal to EB over CD, or DC rather. So if we take any of these and reduce them, that should give us the ratio of EB to DC, which is exactly what we want here. 4 over 6, divide both top and bottom by 2, gives us 2 over 3. Choice 1. So again, let me just explain that one more quick time. If we have a dilation, our sides are in proportion. Which means that any proportion we set up between the corresponding sides should be equal to any of the other proportions of corresponding sides. So something like AE over AD is equal to AB over AC which is also equal to EB over DC.
So again, any of those corresponding sides in a proportion are equivalent to one another. AE over AD gave us 4 6. AB over AC gave us 3 over 4.5. Then we were trying to find EB over CD, DC. And so all we did was take the 4 6 and reduce it. We could have also reduced 3 over 4.5 and still gotten 2 thirds. Either way that you set this up, either way you reduce, you're still going to get the same answer. Number 24 says line y equals 3x minus 1 is transformed by a dilation with a scale factor of 2 and centered at 3, 8. The line's image is blank. So we have to maybe sketch this graph or plot it using your um, grid on the back. So here I have uh, 3x minus 1, meaning we start down here at negative 1. I'm just going to put a couple of tick marks on here. Okay, so 3x minus 1 means start at negative 1, go up 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. So now I have this line passing through here as the original given line. And we have point three comma 8 over 3 up 8. Well, that's interesting. It's right on the line. So if I'm dilating a line centered at a point on the line, we actually don't change the y-intercept at all. Because no matter what, in a dilation of a line, the slope stays the same. And you can see that all of these choices have a 3x here. Slope is 3, stays the same. But because the point, again, I want to reiterate this, point of center of dilation is on the line, the y-intercept does not change. So here, if the y-intercept does not change, that means I still stick with negative 1, giving us choice 4. Answers for this page are the following. Number two, 22 is 4, 23 is 1, 24 is 4. Number 25 says a wooden cube has a length, an edge length of 6 centimeters and a mass of 137.8 grams. Determine the density of the cube to the nearest ten thousandth and then state which type of wood the cube is made of using the density table below. So if we think of a cube, that means we have all sides congruent. So here, if an edge is 6 on this side, then the edge is 6 on this side, and the width, that edge there is 6 also. So to calculate volume, we still use the length times width times height formula, except in this case we have 6 times 6 times 6. Or in other words, 6 cubed. We have 3 of them, it's cubed. So 6 cubed gives us a volume of 216. So that's the first part of my answer. But now I need to find the density. Density is equal to mass over volume. D equals M over V, if you remember that from your science classes. So to find the density, I have to take the mass, 137.8, and put it over the volume, 216. When we type this in the calculator, we get 0.6379, and the decimal keeps going. But notice that the question, again, up top said to round to the nearest uh, thousandth. So if we look at our decimal, we have tens, hundreds, thousands. So the six is the thousands. And looking to the right, that nine is telling me to bump this seven up. So here we have density 
equals 0 0.638. So this is the first part of the question. But then it says determine what type of wood was used based on the density table. If I look for 0.638, I come across ash. So here, final answer, we have ash. These two are necessary for getting full credit for your answer here.